What is going on my friends and welcome back to another video on the channel. Well, as you can see from the title, we will be going over Healthier Choices Management Court, ticker symbol HCMC, another time, man, you guys have been absolutely crushing it on these videos. HCMC has become the most viewed company on my channel with one video doing over 7,000 views and another one doing about 6.5 thousand views. So I can clearly tell that you guys absolutely love the potential behind this company and I will never fail to try to bring you all as much value and content around companies like that as fast as I possibly can. Now I did want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone who did go ahead and sign up for the first tier of my patreon as you can see here we did open up 85 different slots and we filled all of those out i opened up 25 more slots at about four or five days ago now and we filled every single one of them and now we are already starting to work down on the bronze one so if you are interested in joining the patreon we have a community of over a hundred different traders and investors i talk about my portfolios i talk about my trades i talk about all the content that's going to be posted on the youtube i really bring them everything and i'm fully transparent so if that is something Something you'd be interested in definitely go over to this um, link in the description as it will bring you to my patreon in which you can access all of this information now with that being said what are we talking about today well today I wanted to go over three different catalysts that I think are going to be very important for this company going forward you know recently we have been talking about everything and I haven't really broken down any of the catalysts I haven't really talked about any of the good things I briefly mentioned the lawsuit but I really was more focused on giving a company overview and doing an analysis and everything like that so I figured what would be a good idea today is give you guys three things that I'm looking at in this company that I think are very, very positive and I think are going to be very beneficial for this company going forward. If you guys do like today's video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel if you are new. And with that being said, let's go ahead and let's get straight into it. Now, the very first thing that I did want to talk about is going to actually be the management team behind this company, as I do believe going forward, it is going to be very beneficial to having some of these people on that they have. Now, obviously, the CEO and chairman of the board is typically going to be one of the most important people of the business. And I will say that the Jeffrey, that Jeffrey Holman, the CEO of this company, has a lot of good things going for him. It says here that Mr. Holman has been a member of the board for board of directors since May 9th, 2013, and has served as a member of the board of directors for our operating subsidiary, Smoke Anywhere USA, Inc., since its inception on March 24th, 2008. Mr. Holman has been the president of Jeffrey E. Holman & Associates, PA, a South Florida-based law firm since 19. 1998. Now, this is going to be very, very important. Let's remember this. Let's keep this highlighted. He has also been a partner in Holman, Cohen, and Valencia since the year 2000. Mr. Holman graduated from the State University of New York at Binghamton in 1989 with a bachelor's degree and graduated from the Benjamin N. Cardozo School of Law in 1995 with a degree of Juris Doctor. Mr. Holman served as a member of our board of directors because we believe his experience as a director of operating subsidiary Smoke Anywhere USA since its inception has been valuable to the development and growth of our business. So there are a very, very few important things in this in what exactly he has done but none of them as important as this one short term i would say none of them as important as this one because one of the catalysts that we are going to be obviously having to talk about is, is clearly the most the biggest catalyst that they have right now is going to be the lawsuit in which they are going through. Now, I think the fact that we have a CEO and we have someone on the board who has experience in law, I mean, to graduate with a JD, a Juris Doctor, is no small threat. That is a big task, especially from a college like this one. And so the fact that we do see someone with a law experience himself, someone who, like right here, where was that right here? Um, but, 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 but has been the president of J.E. Uh, Jeffrey E. Holman and Associates PA, a South Florida-based law firm since 1998 this man has loads of experience within this field and i think going forward into the future it is going to serve him well as they do have technology that can be copied right they do have technology that has clearly they assume has been copied and i think that with his experience and with his law experience he is going to be capable of figuring it out okay is this company who's making millions and millions of dollars off of technology that is infringing on our patent are we capable of filing a lawsuit against them in defending our technology as we are the ones with patents on this and so going Going forward, I think that's going to be important because they're going to be more people who do something like what's going on with Philip Morris, where they believe, okay, I think that they've copied our patent. I think that they've copied our technology and they're making so much money off of it that they are going to have to pay us out in those damages. And I think he is going to be able to easily recognize its infringement and e uh, easily recognize some of these legal violations considering his experience. And I think that is super duper important, especially going forward amongst the lawsuit that they're in right now. 
Now, not only that, the chief operating officer has loads of experience as well. It says here that Christopher Santi has been our COO since December 12, 2012. Prior to that, Mr. Santi served as director of operations of our company since October 24, 2011. Mr. Santi served as the national sales manager of colleges.net from November 2007 to October 2011. From March 2001 to October 2007, Mr. Santi was the, princip was the principal and served as a president of Santi Management Corporation. Mr. Santi holds a Bachelor of Arts from Lay University in Psychology as well as a Master of Arts from the Miami Institute of Psychology. So this man has loads of education and loads of experience. And what I do like about this is all of the people who are high up in this company have been around for a while. They know how this company runs. They figured out exactly what works best for them. And I think now they are finally starting to catch their stride as they are starting to gain popularity as they're going through these different lawsuits, as they're actually starting to work their, well, work their way up. I think that going forward, the experience that these people have together and that, you know, all the experience that they have working together is going to be very very beneficial in their growth so that is the first catalyst i believe that their management team is actually pretty gosh dang good and i think that that is going to lead them to find much success going here into the future now the next thing that i did want to check out is going to be their nine their nine vape stores that they have one you know some of their subsidiaries that are going to be located across the southeast of the united states now the reason that i believe that this is important is because of a few different things here but none of them being bigger than the growth that we are seeing in this overall industry. It says that the global e-cigarette and vape market size was valued at USD 12 billion in 2019 and is expected to expand at a revenue-based compound annual growth rate of 23.8% from 2020 to 2027. Now the market is expected to gain traction over the forecast period owing to increased product demand from millennials. The availability of a variety of e-cigarette options is anticipated to further fuel product adoption. Now they have nine different stores that are located across the southeast of the US and they are slowly starting to work on growing that out they're trying to focus i did see an interview from a while back where they said that they were trying to focus on getting up to 20 stores within the next two years and i think that if they are capable of doing that that they are going to see loads of growth i believe that e-cigarettes and like they said the vaping and everything it is just growing and honestly may it be the best thing in the world not necessarily in a sense but i do believe that they are going to be able to capitalize on that as they do have patent protected technology and they do have an established system of stores that they have experienced running right it's not like this industry just popped up and then they decided to create a company around this industry in which they're now going to figure out how to run with the growth of the industry no this company has been around for nearly 10 to 15 years they've been doing this for many many years so they've already figured out the best way that their operations are going to run they've already figured out how to work together as a team they've already figured out how to grow and expand their operations and i think with that is going to come loads of growth as we do see this industry really kicking into gear and i would not be surprised to see them really see loads of success especially whenever it comes to growing out their revenue now, the next catalyst is going to be, you know, you can consider this to be a next catalyst, but I'm just going to go ahead and add it into the last one as it could be somewhat considered a part of that too. So the next one that we were going to be going over is their overall business strategy as it is pretty unique and it's different. And I didn't realize how much, you know, it could actually work and make sense until you start to do a little bit further research. So here we are. And it says that healthier choice management core ticker symbol, of course, HCMC business strategy includes continuing to run its nine retail vape stores. It's 18,000 square foot, all natural and Organics, ADA's Natural Market in Fort Myers, Florida, as well as its most recent acquisition of their three Paradise and Health Nutrition stores in the Great Melbourne, Florida area. Management believes that this effort to diversify and grow the company will improve the probability of more quickly securing a return of profitability, as well as improving the company's ability to self to be self-sustaining. ACMC's goal is to achieve a position of self-sufficiency through the operation and growth of its current operations. So, why do I believe that this is a catalyst in itself? Well, one reason that I do specifically believe that it's going to be a catalyst, let's go down here and let's check out their financials. Well, the reason that I think this is going to be so important is because the vape stores and the vape, you know, shops and all of those, they're going to take a while to grow. I do believe. I think that gaining profitability within those is going to be a little bit difficult, but I do believe that it will come with time. I think that this industry is really just starting to grow. I think that 2016, 2017 roughly was when we first started to see it take off. And I think that there are still 
potential gains to be made going into the future here. Now, I do believe that as they do continue to protect their technology that is already patented, now that they have their own technology, their patent protected technology that they will not allow, clearly not allow anyone else to infringe upon, that they are going to be able to grow out their operations within their vape stores. But they do have a strong backing through their, you know, their grocery marts and their health marts. And I think that's very smart. They have health marts and they have those three different stores plus at one very large store, all of them in Florida. And they are going to be like a like a like a financial shell, basically. Those are the ones that they are going to believe that are going to be able to sustain them for a long time, right? Because realistically, all those nutrition stores and grocery marts, those are just still gaining in popularity. They're going to still continue to grow, and it's really a consumer staple. People will always need groceries. So they have that to rely on. So even if their vape stores are struggling, which we will take a look at in a second, even when their vape stores are struggling, realistically, those grocery marts are just going to continue to grow in profitability as long as they do continue to run them right and i wouldn't be surprised at all to see them become profitable very soon now the reason i say this is if we go ahead and we look at 2019 and we look at 2020 if we see here whenever we just look at their total sales their net total sales we can see that in a situation where from 2019 to 2020 let's go ahead and let's just take a look at the three months into september 30th we can see here that in 2019 they did nearly 900,000 in net sales from their vapor sales and only 594,000 in 2020 now of course we can accredit a lot of this from you know the whole pandemic as many of these vape shops and smoke shops were closed down but let's take a look at their net sales from their grocery sales now this is going to have gone up from 2.5 million to 2.7 million so it's almost like an anchor it's a financial anchor in which they'll have that realistically through anything should perform pretty well i can't really imagine a time where we're going to see grocery stores just getting absolutely demolished maybe through the the e-commerce wave as that does increase but realistically these grocery stores do understand how to evolve with that and so that's what i mean whenever i say that even as they do try to figure out this right here as they do try to figure out how to continue to grow their vapor sales and how to grow with that industry who's supposed to grow at what compound annual growth rate of we said earlier over 20 percent as they do try to figure out those they do have this financial anchor and these grocery and these grocery sales that i think is going to carry them forward and allow them to reach profitability even faster as they did mention in their business strategy now the very last catalyst that i'm going to brief, briefly talk about and i'm not going to talk about it too too much as i did make an entire video about it two days ago so definitely go check that out if you do want the whole breakdown but basically we are going to be going over the lawsuit really quickly now of course they are going to be suing philip morris international as they do believe they infringed upon their 170 patent now this is going to be more of a catalyst for the short term as we are expecting honestly that this is going to go to court there's going to be some type of date within february i think it was towards the end of february i can't remember the exact date but we are expecting that they will likely get a settlement my guess is that realistically they're not going to go through the entire process and that this whole entire lawsuit is going to fit finish out my guess is that with philip morris's insanely large market i mean this is a company who's worth over 125 billion what is such a large market cap and what's a, with such a strong team of attorneys that they'll likely will reach some type of settlement with hcmc but honestly that is not a bad thing for hcmc they, that that's a statement more than anything that's a statement saying this is our technology it's patent protected we own a piece of this overall industry as we grow we want to be the ones the sole people providing everyone with this technology and we're not going to let anyone step in our way and if you do decide that you're going to infringe upon our patent we're going to make sure that we get paid out substantially from it and so that is about it on that one i'm not going to touch up too too much more as i again don't want to basically restate anything that i said in my last video but definitely go check out that last video if you do want more information about that well with that being said those are the three slash four catalysts that i really do see from this company there are risks and that is something i'm going to go over at a later date but i would say that this company does have a few different things going for them as i think everyone has been so focused on the lawsuit that they don't think about the fact that their business strategy is pretty dang on interesting their management team has loads of experience and their management team has a lot of experience in the field in which they are going through lawsuits in so i do think that all of these can be very very good for this company going forward and i'm very excited to see how this all does pan out with healthier choices management corp ticker symbol hcmc would well, definitely let me know what you guys thoughts on this company are down below are you buying are you holding have you bought and you're gonna sell definitely let me know as i do love to hear your opinions down in the comment section below i read every single one of your comments i may not always get to you know respond to every single one as we do get hundreds of comments a day but i do try to read every single one and i love hearing your opinions with that being said i do post on this channel two to three times every single day and i'll see you all next time peace